church. Who's ready for a great day today, huh? Amen. I will rejoice in the house of the Lord and be glad in it. Hey, we are so glad to have you here, whether you're in person or online. I know I just missed a Sunday last week traveling, so we're glad to have you here today, all right? You guys, who's ready for a great Sunday, a great worship? Who's ready to enter into the presence of the Lord today, huh? Let's enter into gladness and thanksgiving.
stay in an atmosphere of praise, I got a word for you. Because God wants to use you today. He wants to use you to save your family. He wants you to use you to save your marriage, to save your finances, to save your work, to bring an environment of praise, an atmosphere of joy. He wants to use you. El Shaddai, God Almighty, wants to use you. When I was younger, I would always say, God, use me, use me. But I'm too young. We just hear so much of that these days. I feel like God just sees it because I got news for you folks. Everybody's got excuses. Excuses are like trash. They're like trash. Everybody's got it and they all stink. Everyone's got excuses. I'm too young. God, I'm too busy. God, I'm too old. God, it's just not the right timing. God, my family takes priority. God, my, my work takes priority. And God's just flipping through the trash. Can't use this one. That one's not good. Sorry, can't use that one. That one's no good. You see, I can't use you with excuses, but I can use you if you'll recognize El Shaddai today. If you'll recognize God Almighty is here with you today. He's here to use you. He's come down to use you. That's who he wants to. Let's build back into that chorus again. Church, I always say, I always say, but boy, is it a blessing to worship with you here today. Man, you may be seated. Hey, I just want to let you guys know, if you are an honored guest here today, if it is your first time here with us today, please don't pass up on an opportunity. We want to meet you. We want to know you. We want to find out how we can invite you into our family, how we can welcome you into our family best. Don't miss an opportunity. We have a free gift waiting for you out in the lobby and a pastor's handshake and hello. All right? Please don't pass up on that. Also, you can text WELCOME to 972-402-6456 or scan the QR code. Nice and fancy for us here today. Um, outside of that, I just want to let you guys know, all my men in here, can I get a hoo-hoo, holla-holla? Hoo-hoo, holla-holla. All right. 
Um, all my guys, unfortunately, I know every single one of you with guns is looking forward to this. Unfortunately, the rain hath bested us. Men's shooting night will be canceled tomorrow. Robert's property, unless you want to shoot in about waist, uh, belly button high water, it's, uh, it's just not going to work. All right. <laughs> so it is canceled for tomorrow night. Um, hopefully they'll reschedule, but that'll be up to your men's pastor and head pastor, not me. If it were up to me, then I would say reschedule. Anyways, <laughs> outside of that, guys, we are we have no other announcements. We are on lovely summer break. How many of y'all enjoyed some great vacations here this, this this summer, huh? Yeah? Man, I just had a lovely time in Destin. And um, don't worry, I was watching here online and enjoying watching y'all worship while I had to sit on a couch. Now worship is a little difficult to worship on the TV, you know. But, uh... You can, you sure can. And keep that in mind, online viewers, you sure can. It's just a little difficult. <laughs> it is better, it is so much better here. Um, but I was in beautiful Destin, surrounded by my in-laws, every man's worst nightmare. And I was, I was scared to death, I'll be honest with you, church. The couch was my best friend. <laughs> and I'm sitting there and I'm just, I'm thanking God for this lovely message. Wasn't a great message last week. We loved it. I loved it so much. But we uh, were sitting there watching the message, and all of a sudden I look around, and we got the whole family around us watching the service online. I was, I mean, I was blown away. They're, and we tried to, we, we thought we were disrupting them, so we tried to move it outside, and they told us, well, hey, are you trying to kick us out of church today? <laughs> and I said, well, it, well, by God, excuse me. Why don't you, <laughs> let's bring it back in here, and let's, uh, let's, let's enjoy service together, man. And that was so wonderful. Just to get to enjoy service with your family. I, just, I can't count God's blessing when your family, your whole family is here. And you get to be with them and worship with them. It's so wonderful. Um, <laughs> you guys, I just want to let you know, before I introduce a very important man, we do, uh, we do have tithe and offering here. Um, we have five ways, six ways to give. We have a lot of ways to give. Okay? I'm going to go through them all real quick. You can scan the QR code to give. You can give in the bucket. You can... Uh, text give to 972-402-6456. Ooh, look at that. Got that one. Uh, you can mail it to P.O. Box 886. More for our online viewers that are watching us from Alaska. Uh, you can give online at livespringtx.com. We'll give tab there. And you can give at the kiosk. I don't know if we have it there anymore or it's outside. But boom. How about that? That was straight from the dome, guys. That was, you're welcome. Um, outside of that, though, guys, I get the special honor. Now, normally... My father, Rex, takes this from me, and he has to, he's got to say a word on every Sunday. But he's decided to take a breather. Everybody give him a round of applause. My goodness. That's, that's hard for a, a head pastor to take a rest, take a break. You know, it's very difficult. It's, it's very difficult. But I want to introduce my uncle, my birthday buddy, all right, because we both had our birthdays yesterday. Y'all give him a special welcome. The man who's going to speak on El Shaddai, God Almighty today, Randy Song said... Oh, he changed it. Oh. That's okay. <laughs> How you doing? Well, good morning. It's such a great pleasure to be back in my home state of Texas. I just can't stand it. If I have to eat any more Mexican food in Memphis, I may just start falling right there on the spot. <laughs> Uh, it's such a joy to be back with you here today, and uh, today we're, we're, I'm speaking on uh, Jehovah El Roy. Now, we've been doing the names of God and how that uh, the, the ancient Israelites um, believed that when Moses said, don't take the name of the Lord your God in vain, that it meant you couldn't speak his name. He was unspeakable. And so... They began to use the attributes of God as the names of God. And so that's why you have so many names, El Shaddai, uh, uh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah El Roy. So where did Jehovah El Roy come from? And when I'm talking about Jehovah El Roy, we all know who he was, who he is, who he will be. But why did the Jews use Jehovah El Roy. Jehovah El Roy means the God who sees me. And it came from not 
an Israelite, not the house of Abraham, but rather an Egyptian woman. And the story of the Egyptian woman, I'm not going to read all 15 verses, but you can read about this incident that led to the name of God, Jehovah El Roy. And it's in Genesis chapter 16, verses 1 through 15. And I'm going to summarize those 15 verses for you real quick. This is where Abraham is a sojourner. He's a wanderer in the desert. He's looking for the land that God promised him. He was living in the land that God promised him. And he was living in tents at the time. And so God had appeared to Abraham and said, Abraham, I'm going to make a great nation out of you. If you can count the stars in the sky, if you can count the sands on the sea, then you can count your descendants. And they will shine like the stars in the heavens. And of course that promise not only included the ancient Israelites, but it also included me because the seed of Abraham that was promised was Christ. And Christ is that seed. And you can find that promise being fulfilled in Galatians chapter 3. It said Jesus is the seed of Abraham. And so the descendants of Abraham come to fruition through Christ himself. So God promised him that. He said, I'm going to build seed out of you and no man can count them all. And then he's 85. And there's no baby. And Sarah's 85. She's not looking so good anymore. She looks like she might need a little ironing with the wrinkles. <clears throat> and so Sarah says, all right, I give up. I've tried and tried to have a child. I can't have a child. So the promise of God must not be coming through my womb. It must be coming through somebody else's womb. And so in that day, women who had uh, uh, families and they were wealthy, had a little bit of money, they would have a handmaid or two or three or four with them to attend to whatever they needed attendance to. And so Sarah, wife of Abraham, had the same thing. And her name was Hagar. And she was an Egyptian woman. And she was no doubt very young and was able to uh, do all the things that needed to be done for Sarah. And so she looks at Hagar and she looks at Abraham and she says, Abraham, look, let's have a frank chat. Obviously, I cannot get pregnant. I'm 85 years old. So I want you to sleep with Hagar, my handmaid. Now, you want to go, come on. That's not in the Bible. Yes, it is. Go read it. Genesis 16, 1 through 15. And she gave up her, her handmaid to her husband and said, here, go have sexual relations with her. Now, think about what went through Abraham's head at that point in time. <laughs> Abraham is probably looking around going, did, did she say what I thought she said? And he gives one of his shepherd boys over to the side and he goes, did you hear what she just said? She said to go for me to go sleep with Hagar. And the guy there has probably said, well, I mean, look at Hagar. <clears throat> She's young. There's no wrinkles. She hadn't had to have any plastic surgery on anything. It's great. She's fantastic. So, you know, if the wife gives the okay, then here we go. And so Abraham goes and he sleeps with young Hagar. And she gets pregnant. And then, guess what? The first cat fight in the Bible happened. <clears throat> she gets pregnant and she starts haunting Sarah and it's like ha, 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 ha. I am pregnant and you're not and I've got a child with Abraham ha, ha, ha. Sarah had had enough and so Sarah kicks her out of the camp and she's so mean to her that Hagar just runs out into the desert and she's alone out in the desert and she's pregnant and she falls to her knees and she's praying, and for the first time, the spring in the desert appears, and it nourishes Hagar for a period of time. And then suddenly, the, one of the first, what we call Christophanies, appear to an Egyptian woman in the middle of the desert. What is a Christophany? Christophany, in the Bible, when you see in the Old Testament, the angel of the Lord, that's Christ in the Old Testament. And so 
its appearance of Christ in the Old Testament. It was Christ that appeared to Abraham and said, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. It was the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord comes to Hagar now and says, take heart. I've appeared to you. I'm going to nourish you. You're going to have a son. He is going to be mighty. He's going to be fantastic. He's going to uh, be a fighter, and he's going to fight with his own people. But I'm going to bless him, and I'm going to bless his seed, and they will multiply like the sands of the sea. And that was Ishmael. Ishmael was the son of Hagar, half the son of Abraham, and he is the father of the Arab world, where the Arab world comes from. And so God blessed him and blessed the child, and he took care of Hagar in the desert, and God said, I see what has happened. <clears throat> I'm going to take care of you because I promised Abraham in a covenant that I would bless his seed, and Ishmael is seed, I'm going to bless him, I'm going to nourish you, I'm taking care of you. And she said, I have seen the one who sees me. And she was taken care of in the desert. And that is where Jehovah El Roy appears first. That name appears with Hagar, the Egyptian woman. It's interesting, and I'm not going to belabor this point, but it's interesting because if she came from Egypt, Egypt had over a hundred gods that they would worship and pray to and make sacrifice to and all this pagan um, theology that they had. Why didn't she pray to one of the Egyptian gods? She didn't. She prayed that the one who sees me, Jehovah, the God of Abraham, the God of my, I guess, husband, it's him. And it was Jehovah Elroy that made the appearance and blessed her. And so she said, this is in verse 13, she said, truly I have seen the one who sees me. I'm going to go into the future about 2,000 years from this time when Hagar was there. And Israel was behaving badly again. And God allows and raises up a people called the Babylonians through Nebuchadnezzar. And he comes in and he sacks Jerusalem in 586 B.C. And when he sacked Jerusalem, he tore the temple down Solomon's temple. The walls were inlaid with gold, and he literally tore the temple down. So when he set it on fire, the gold melted and ran down the crevices, and they tore down the temple stone by stone, getting all the gold and taking captives of everyone that was in Israel that they could find. They put hooks in their noses, and they marched them from Jerusalem all the way up to what is now ancient Iran and Iraq. And he takes them back to Babylon, and they are enslaved for 70 years. Now, you can read this in Ezekiel chapter 37, and I want you to take a look at Ezekiel 37. I'm going to read the first uh, several verses because this is very, very key. When the Israelites went into captivity, the Babylonians bred them out, and that was their goal, was to breed out all of the Israelites. So that the men of Babylon took the women of Israel and had relations with them and they created a non-nationality. And so from the time of the captivity in 586 B.C., the tribes of Israel are no more. There are no more tribes. The tribe of Dan, the tribe of, uh, of Judah, the tribe of all the, all, the, all the tribes of Israel, 12 tribes, are gone. They've been bred out. And so... The cry in Babylon by the people that used to be the Israelites was, we are no more. Our people are no more. The tribes of Israel are gone. We've been scattered to the four winds. We will never come back. We're done. God has turned his back on us, and he does not see us. And so Ezekiel was one of the young men that the Babylonians took and trained in a Babylonian culture was taught to read, write, etc. And Ezekiel was living in Babylon as a captive when he has this vision in chapter 37. And so I'm setting the background for what I'm about to read to you because this is God speaking to Ezekiel. God has heard the cry of the people. It says, we are no more. And so it says in 37 verse 1, the Lord took hold of me, and I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. 
He led me all around among the bones that covered the valley floor. They were scattered everywhere across the ground and were completely dried out. Then he said to me, Son of man, can these bones become living people again? And Ezekiel says, Oh, sovereign Lord, you alone know the answer to that. Then he said to me, Speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, Dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Look. I am going to put breath into you and make you live again. I will put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I'll put breath into you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I spoke this message. Just as he told me, suddenly as I spoke, there was a rattling noise all across the valley. The bones of each body came together and attached themselves as complete skeletons. Then as I watched, muscles and flesh formed over the bones. Then skin uh, formed to cover their bodies, and they still had no breath in them. Then he said, speak a prophetic message to the winds, son of man. Speak a prophetic message and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, O breath. From the four winds, breathe into these dead bodies so they may live again. So I spoke the message as he commanded me, and breath came into their bodies. They all came to life and stood on their feet, a great army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel. They are saying, we have become old dry bones. All hope is gone. Our nation is finished. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel. And he says, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I will open your graves of exile and cause you to rise again. Then I will bring you back to the land of Israel. When this happens, O my people, you will know that I am the Lord. I will put my spirit in you and you will live again and return home to your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken I've done what I said that I would do. Yes, the Lord has spoken. In 486 B.C. was the fulfillment of Ezekiel chapter 37. They came back as a nation through Nehemiah. They rebuilt the temple with Ezra and Nehemiah. And they came back as a people and they rebuilt the temple. And they came back as a people, as an army, and they flourished from that point forward up until the time of Christ. That happened. What God said happened. Now, it's interesting because they were saying there is no more hope. All hope is gone. But Jehovah El Roy was watching. He heard their cry. He said, this is what they're saying. He said, but you need to tell them something different. Tell them that I've heard their cry, and I'm going to bring them back. And he did. Say, that's great. It's a great little history lesson. But what does that mean for me today? There's probably, not probably, there's many of you, maybe here this morning, maybe by social media, that you have had a bad deck of cards dealt you in your life, and you have been beaten, you've been broken, you felt like that Nobody can see you. Nobody hears you at 2 o'clock in the morning when you're sobbing about an issue. Your heart is broken. Jehovah El Roy is watching. He sees you when nobody else sees you. When you're laying in bed at 3 o'clock in the morning and Satan comes in your ear and tells you that you're nothing, that everything that you've done in your life is wrong, that you will never be anything, and he wants to beat you down, beat you down, beat you down. Guess what? Jehovah El Roy saw it. He saw you when you cried. He heard you when you prayed. But you feel like that your bones have been scattered. They've been put in a dry place because you've been beaten up. You've been broken. For whatever situation that may have come your way, that you cannot believe is happening to you. It may be a medical diagnosis. It may be a family member that has passed. It may be a broken heart through a divorce, through your children, 
through your family. I don't know what you may be going through, but every single one of you sitting here and that is watching on social media, you have gone through horrible times or you will at some point in time, and you need to understand this one thing, that Jehovah El Roy is watching, yeah. and he sees you where you are. Yeah. And the, your bones that have been scattered, the beatings that you've taken in your life, so to speak, when I say beatings, I mean you felt like you've been beaten up by whatever it is. It may be finances, whatever. You've been beaten up. You feel like your bones are scattered, but I've got good news for you this morning. The same God that saw Hagar in the desert, the same God that breathed the breath of life into a nation of people is the same God this morning that's going to breathe the breath of life into your spirit and bring your spiritual bones back together and put skin on your physical body and cause you to thrive. And as you stand up this morning, when we stand up, we're going to pray, and God himself, Jehovah El Roy is going to breathe the breath of life back into your spirit where you were broken, you will be broken no more, period. Those hurts that you've had, those bad times that you've gone through, they scarred you, but God is going to put you back together and breathe the breath of life into you this morning to where there is no more nonsense going on in your head at 3 in the morning because Jehovah El Roy is the one that came and delivered you this morning. Good preaching, brother. I appreciate that. Amen. Sometimes you got to amen yourself. <clears throat> I want to read some scripture from the New Testament because as I'm going through uh, my life and I see uh, so many people that have been broken, as a lawyer, nobody calls their lawyer to have coffee. They call you up to tell you what kind of problem they've got. Right? <laughs> And so you hear the problems and you see what people are going through and you go, that's, that's terrible. That's horrible. And they get beaten down to the point to where they, they are living in mediocrity. You're not living that life that Christ has for you because you've allowed Satan, not even allowed it, Satan has just come at you and, and tried to beat you to death. Emotionally, psychologically, mentally, sometimes physically, it's just a fight all the time. Let me give you some good news. Romans 15, verses 13. I pray that God, the source of all hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's good. Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. He says, don't worry about anything. Now just try that sometime. I'm not going to worry about anything. I'm not going to worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. When Satan comes to you and tells you that you're nothing, you go back and quote Philippians 6, 4, 6, and 7. <clears throat> God is guarding my heart, and God is guarding my mind. Colossians 1, 12b, that's the second half of, of verse 12 through 14. I love this. He has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. God has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness. I want to say that again. God has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness. Who is it that comes against you all the time? Who is it that talks to you and whispers in your ear in the middle of the night and makes you feel less than. It's the darkness. It's the devil. It's Satan. And he has clearly in Colossians, under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, Paul writes and he said, he's rescued us from that. You don't have to listen to that anymore. You don't have to live that kind of mediocrity because why? God has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us 
into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. Man, that's good. Romans 8, 38 and 39. You may say, I just don't know if God is paying attention to me. I don't know if God really loves me. I don't feel him. When I pray, it's like the heavens are brass. If you're a Christian this morning, this is a great verse for you. Romans 8, 38, 39. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. If you're struggling spiritually this morning, these scriptures are food for your spirit. <clears throat> I don't have to give you a sermon that's an outline, fancy, whatever, that you learn in seminary where they teach you how to let your voice rise to a fever pitch and then fall softly to the ground. <clears throat> you know, that's the way they've taught you how to preach. <clears throat> I'm going, I can't do it, pal, sorry. <clears throat> I'm from Texas. I'm going to say fixing a lot. <clears throat> You're going to have to just deal with it. <clears throat> but this is food for your spirit. The scriptures itself will bless you and nourish you through these times that you go through. Romans 5, verse 3 through 5. We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials. For we know that they help us develop endurance and endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. You see that word confidence? Yeah. Word confidence is throughout the New Testament. Be confident in who you are. And sometimes you have to go, I've done it. My wife thinks that I'm crazy and started making appointments with different psychologists because I'm looking at myself in the mirror in the morning and I'm saying, Randy, who are you? And I'm looking around going, I don't know, who am I? I thought I was me. <clears throat> but you ask yourself, Randy, who are you? Because spiritually, if you are being beaten down and you're not confident in your walk, you're constantly being put under condemnation. The worst thing in the world Christians have to deal with, condemnation. I'm not good enough. I'm, I sinned yesterday. I'm, I had this thought. I did this deed. I did whatever. The confident hope is that you have accepted Christ as your Savior, and that confident hope makes you a child of the Most High God. Jehovah El Roy is your daddy, and he's the one that has called you to share in the inheritance that is yours this morning. <laughs> Giving confident endurance in the confident hope of salvation, and the last part of that verse says, and this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Man, that is what Christ has done for us. And this morning you may be struggling on social media. You're watching and you're saying, Randy, you're speaking directly to me. I've been, I've been worried about these things. I'm, I'm living a less than life. I'm in, living in mediocrity. And I need to fill my soul this morning. I need to be put back together because I've been beaten to death by the devil. And it's time this morning for you to put, shake off the shackles. Let Christ put your, your spirit back together and breathe the breath of life back into your spirit this morning. Let's all stand. This morning... I think is important to know that it's Jehovah El Roy is the one that sees you in the middle of the night. He sees your sorrow. He sees your broken heart. And this morning, he is ready to breathe the breath of life back into your spirit so that that spirit that you had where you're negative, you feel hopeless. You don't feel, feel like there's any chance that things are ever going to get better. Let me tell you something. They're about to get a whole lot better. Amen.
So if you need a touch this morning, let's go to prayer. Father, we pray this morning that these that are listening, that have been broken, that have had the broken heart, their spirit's been crushed, their bones have been scattered spiritually in a desert dry place. This morning, Father, I pray in the name of the Holy One, Christ Jesus the Righteous, that you will speak the word this morning and cause these bones to come back to life and breathe your spirit, your Holy Spirit, back into their spirit and cause them to get confident and become confident in their walk with Christ Jesus the righteous this morning. Father, we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Brendan, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Well, we talked about a couple Jehovah's today, but Jehovah El Roy, hallelujah, the God who sees me. You know what? We always want to give a chance. If uh, you don't know about this God who sees you, you don't know about Jehovah El Roy, you've never met him, you've never encountered him, you feel like your relationship is broken with him, we want to give you an opportunity to surrender your life to Christ today. If every head will bow, the eye will close. If that's you today and you need to amend your relationship with Christ, you need to restore your relationship with Christ, you need a relationship with Christ. You need a Savior. Just slip your hand up today. We want to pray for you. We want you to make that come. Thank you for me. Oh, hallelujah. Everybody saved you today. Man, I can't wait to see everybody in heaven. My goodness. And next Sunday. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much that your spirit is imparted in every single one of these people. And every single one of us, God, I thank you, God, that we are no longer Jews nor Gentiles, God. We are Christians. We are Christ-like. Father, thank you today for Jehovah Elroy, the God who sees me, God, and who will continue to see me. God, I pray you watch over each and every single one of us. Bless our Sundays, God. Bless every individual. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You guys, it's been a wonderful Sunday, and it truly was a blessing to worship with you today. Thank you, Father. You guys are dismissed. We love you. Go in peace and love.